Hi Frank, thanks for your time. Hi. Uh, Tiago Silva's birthday today. Can you give him a, an early birthday present by telling him we involved in the squad tomorrow? He's in the squad for tomorrow, so I'm not sure whether that's a birthday present or not for him, but he's uh, yeah, he's uh, f- getting fit, getting fit, so in the squad and I'll make a decision on uh, how many minutes he may get during the game, what's best for him. Almost two years ago, uh, exactly, um, Championship side went to a big Premier League club in the League Cup and caused an upset. That was Derby at Old Trafford. So you never take these games for granted, can you? No, I, I certainly won't. Regardless of that that game itself, I've been involved in many games of this type in my career, playing and managing now, uh, and understand the potential difficulties of them. We have to have absolute respect for the opponent. Um, I know. Barnsley now from watching them and uh, how they play, their coach, um, the versatility of their team, the system of the way they play. And I'm sure, as most teams that will come to Stamford Bridge, um, in a competition like this from the Championship, they want to show, individuals will want to show, and the collectively they want to show that they can compete with us. It's a difficult one in a way for you to respond to, Frank, but it may obviously uh, probably will impact on, on your fixture schedule going forward, the situation with Leighton Orient and Spurs tonight, if it is a buy, which it may be, that's not going to affect you of course, but if they have to play the game, it might be played when you should have, if you got through tomorrow night, played Spurs in the next round. What's your view on this whole scenario? How should it be sorted out? I don't know. I, I don't have the, the, view, the view because these times that we're in are, are causing multitude of problems all over the place, so I, I'm very uh, sympathetic to the to certain parts of it and uh, I don't know the ins and outs of the Leighton Orient situation in Tottenham if there are lots of tests that are, that are positive then of course it puts the game in jeopardy it's maybe how you uh, find a solution then is up to the authorities but it's a difficult time of year it's a very difficult time of year for everybody for different ways particularly with Covid um, ourselves whereas we prepare for our game tonight I'm, I'm happy that it's on because for, for me it's with respect to Barnsley and with respect to the competition, it's a huge night for us for fitness of our team. We're getting fit and I use this game primarily as another op- chance for the players to get fitter. And on that subject, uh, Boris has just announced you're probably busy on the training pitch, but this October 1st date beginning the Guinness gets sports fans back to events is now not going to happen. Uh, disappointed? Yeah, c- clearly we, we all want fans back. The fans want to be back. Um, in a controlled manner I think which were the plans anyway and I hope it just happens as quickly as possible again I'm not if these calls are for the government there's a lot going on at the moment safety must always be paramount but as soon as we can get a controlled level of, of fans back in the stadium then we really have to try and push for that Last one from me I'm going to upset you probably by mentioning Mendy's name again but reports are to believe he's either had or he's having a Chelsea medical do you have any news at all on that? Yeah, Mendy's having a medical as we speak, so uh, subject to that being okay later on, um, he will become our player at that point. A good sign. Sorry. Okay, go yeah. to Moose, please. Hi, Frank. Hi, Moose. Um, following on from the fact that Mendy's joining you, um, you told me on Sunday after the game that you were always going to play with your Caballero. Um, against Barnsley. How has Kevin taken that news off the back of his performance and how will it do you to think of response to Mendy joining? Well, the Willie Caballero decision, as I said, was made and it was a decision I made a lot in cup competitions last year. So there's no response. That was that was a clear decision that I made. Willie trains brilliantly throughout the year. He deserves his opportunities and, and I decided on that before um, Sunday. Um, with Mendy coming in, it's more competition so every reaction will have to be positive around that for Kepper, for Mendy as he comes in himself um, to push to try and play in this team um, we know that we know the standards that are required of a, of, a, of a goalkeeper in this team what we want what we desire and um, we have to push for that Apart from the obvious of looking for a place in the next round and uh, a game against Spurs how much are you or will they more um, how much and what are you looking to get out of the Barnsley game? Is it just fitness? Is this almost like another pre-season game? Yeah, I'll be honest, Moose. We're, that's, we're in a very difficult position, I think, in those terms. I, I would say, I don't want to compare us to all the other teams, but we had pretty much as, as, as short a break as you can have because of our Champions League game against Bayern Munich. 
which took us two weeks beyond the, the, the regular season. Um, and then we came back and played when everybody else started, unlike a few other teams in the Premier League. We also made some uh, new signings. We also had double figures of quarantines at the start of pre-season. So we're clearly in pre-season mode and that's why we mustn't get too judgmental. I'm not being too judgmental of the squad at this point because we are short on fitness for individuals in the team. On top of that, I want to work on how we play and what we do, what we're about. and um, We showed fantastic stuff for big periods last year and we want to move that step further. So every moment to work now is a moment to improve and that means on the training pitch and that means Barnsley tomorrow night. Well, finally, for me, I know you already mentioned about the fans and the fact that now it doesn't look like they they won't be coming back in October. They may not even be back in 2020. I spoke to Steve Bruce this morning. He said that you know last season it had to get finished, but you know it's not the spectacle it used to be. It's it's, it's not really proper football without the fans. Is it actually getting you and the players down having to play in empty stadiums? It's not. It's not getting um, us down because I think the professional element of it means that. My job is more focused in a way without fans because I can actually contribute more in game times and communicate with the players. So you just change your focus on that. We were all, you know, we all seriously want fans back in because this is what the Premier League is all about: having fans and having that interaction, home fans, away fans, whatever. It, it heightens the atmosphere, um, and we want that. So um, it certainly isn't getting us down. It's just we want them back badly. We want them back in a controlled manner, and let's hope we can find that way as soon as possible. John Southall, five nine. Hi Frank. Hi John. Um, how important was Petr Cech in the signing of um, Edward Mendy? Was his recommendation? Yeah, I think Petr was important in that because it's a, a goalkeeper position is a very particular position. Peter Cech was the best in the world at that position for a long time, so he certainly will have, obviously have a big say in, in, in this situation. From my point of view, I lean heavily on him when it comes to the the goalkeepers day-to-day planning, future, everything. So, yeah, he was very influential. On Tony Rudiger, um, what's the thinking about him not being in the squad on Sunday? Um, And will he start tomorrow? I don't don't want to divulge the starting uh, team tomorrow, so I won't go there. But I said it after the game against Liverpool that I now, at this present time, have five centre-backs. So... I don't want to have to answer the question every week of why one or two are on the, on the bench or you know not in the squad. It's not possible. We don't have a squad, a bench of nine players and five you can bring on. So sometimes people have to sit out. And um, with Kai Havertz, obviously he played more of a central role on Sunday. Where do you see his his best position? Well, Kai has played various positions through his career and he's played as a number eight, as a number ten. He can play, he played a lot of the, of the right-hand side as well last year for Leverkusen. So I have my own ideas about where I see him going forward. I think the main point at the minute with Kai is getting him fit. He is heavily in uh, what I mentioned with the team and squad being in pre-season mode. Um, Kai, I've, because of the situation, we, we, we aren't in the position where we can bring in players, backup players at big levels of money that we can wait and integrate them into the team. Kai has come here to be a huge talent for this team and we just need to get him fit and ready and then I think the position will become very clear. And of the others, uh, Pulisic, Ben Chilwell, Zayek, any of those ready to... Ben Chilwell's in the squad, to, ben Chilwell's in the squad tomorrow and um, Christian and uh, Hakim Zayek are getting closer as well. OK, Nick, you're all here. Frank, obviously with um, great news that Mendy's hopefully going to be um, completed shortly, um, will that benefit Kepa in the long run to have that competition? Obviously, I know you really want everyone uh, pushing each other. It's obviously, like you said, that confidence hasn't been um, brilliant for him. But you know, it's been, so, you know, some people sort of, I think, assume that, you know, that Mendy's arrival means it's that that's that for, for Kepa. But I think you, you see that differently, don't you? Is that just worth stressing that, isn't it? Um, yeah, I don't know what benefits anyone in the long run. Football is always in your hands in the current moment and how you work going forward. So I think competition is a regular thing at a club like Chelsea. I know the goalkeeper situation is not always as clear cut as that, but that's where we're at. Um, we have brought Mendy in to bring that competition. We know that it's an area that Kepa himself wants to improve um, in, in his own performance. So. Um, it's in everybody's hands in this squad to push, to train, to, to have the right attitude, to try and compete to, to get in the team. So that remains the same. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not uh, making any um, final statements at all at the minute. Football's not like that. The lads have to work. They have to be a squad. They have to have spirit and be together and back each other. 
goalkeepers, particularly in their small group, have to do that day to day, and we'll see. James Harvey. Just following on from that, I mean, how difficult is it for, is it maybe the hardest position goalkeeper for a, for a player to rebuild their confidence because you either play or you don't, you, can't, you, know, you don't play in a pairing. Is, could you just talk a little bit about as a manager how you tackle that, and, you know, how you rebuild that confidence in a goalkeeper? Yeah, I, I think it is the hardest position because of the individual nature of it and because the mistakes generally get punished. Uh, with goals uh, that doesn't happen necessarily in other parts of the pitch so our, the eye can easily be drawn to that and I, and I understand that so I also as a manager have to be sympathetic to that point um, I, last year you know, I changed the goalkeeper between Kepper and Willie a, a, a few times but when I do it I do it with a different thought process to how I do it with outfield players because I understand the different elements to it so um, I'm very aware of that um, at the same time we're always striving for the best performance we can get um, and that's what we must continue to do. Last two, Liam Twimmy and then there's Arkansas. Hi Frank, just to clarify on Mendy, um, is there any requirement on him to quarantine at all or, or once he passes the medical will he be available to you? As far as I'm, I'm aware and um, I'd rather you do some research and back this up as well with the, the doctors or the Premier League if you can but as long as he passed, uh, he's having his t- a test now before he travels to England, he will be tested with us on Thursday collectively as a team. And all being well and the tests are negative, he's ready to play. OK, last question, Ms Arkansas. Hi Frank, um, will you use this match to give any youth opportunities or is it more of a case of sort of giving those sort of fringe members of the squad a bit of a chance to play themselves back into your starting lineup more often? Yeah, we're at a position I mentioned before that, that it's, this game for me is, of course, about getting through to the next round as it always would be. But my huge uh, eyes on the on the fitness of the team because we are we're not fit now, which means our pressing game um, and the speed of our game will be very difficult to attain the levels that we want. So I will use that game probably from prim- primarily for first team squad to get there. Also, we have the issue of the bubble now where we cannot just transfer players from academy to first team training and into the squad so that's slightly uh, forced that one in terms of maybe getting some young players involved which I would have liked to have done maybe even off the bench Okay, that's the end of the broadcast section